Hi, Hi. Haley. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Very good. Thanks for joining us today. Yes, um, I have to say I'm a little biased about this live because oh. Barcelona <laughs> is probably one of my uh, favorite travel destinations, but mm -hmm. I haven't been in a while and you oh, have cool. been there quite recently. So yeah. Nice to get an update. Um, so I did spill the beans. Obviously, everybody, we are going to, we're going to Spain. We're going to Barcelona. So mm -hmm. Haley, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you go to school? I didn't mm -hmm. spill the beans on that this time. <laughs> uh, what you're studying and, of course, the question of the hour, because Instagram only gives us an hour. Um, why did you choose Barcelona as your, your program of choice? Yeah, I am a senior right now studying journalism and media production at Washington State University in Pullman. And I studied abroad in Barcelona in the spring of 2020. I decided to choose Barcelona because I had been there before, not for very long, but I just thought it would be a really fun and interesting city to study abroad in. I thought that I could learn a lot more about the culture and I'm also studying Spanish a little bit, so I wanted to improve those skills. So that's kind of why I chose Spain and Barcelona in particular. Awesome. So we have we have three programs um, for fall and spring semester in Barcelona. Which one of those universities did you did you end up choosing? Yeah, I studied at the University UAB in Barcelona, and my Universitat all of my Atmana Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yep. And um, all of my classes were actually at the Sant Pau campus, which mm -hmm. is kind of by Sagrada Familia. So it was nice that all my classes were in one space. I didn't have to like go around the city too much. Very cool. And for those of us who have never been to Spain, what is Sagrada Familia? Can you set the stage? Yeah, the Sagrada Familia is a church made by Gaudí. It's one of the most popular tourist attractions in the world, I would say. It's really beautiful, very unique. So it was kind of really exciting to be able to walk by that every day. I would always take a picture of it, even though I have like 100 in my phone, just because I think it's so beautiful and the the story behind it is very interesting too. Yeah, and the first picture is never good enough. So the second, the yeah. third, every, I can make this better. picture better every day. Yeah, awesome, very cool. So you said you were studying Spanish at uh, Washington State. So did you have Spanish under your belt before you went to, to Barcelona? Um, I Barcelona? Studied, yeah, I studied it? Spanish in high school a little bit. I definitely wouldn't say that I was like fluent. Sure. But I definitely have like a Spanish knowledge. Um, but that being said, you don't need to know the language to study abroad in a specific country. Um, sure. It does help a little bit, but you can, I had friends who would go, who went with us and they didn't speak any Spanish, but then they kind of picked it up and they were talking with locals, just kind of getting the hang of it. So I think it's still good to always be practicing your Spanish, even if you don't feel super confident with it. Right. And when you're learning Spanish, textbook Spanish at your university, it's different than oh, the different. Spanish they speak in Barcelona. So yeah. can you kind of explain the difference between the two and if you had any challenges with the yeah. Catalonian versus regular mm -hmm. Spanish? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they do speak Catalan in Barcelona, but there are a lot of people that still speak Spanish. I know that my friends that are fluent in Spanish that I was with in Barcelona, they could understand Catalan and understand it in the grocery store. But um, there isn't a huge barrier with that. They definitely still understand what you say if you speak in mm -hmm. Spanish. And if you do mess up on little grammatical errors, it's not the end of the world. They will get what you're saying. And I think that they do appreciate when you try. It's, yeah. always, it's always nice to try and try to speak their language. They won't really get offended as long as you're being respectful. Yeah. We talked about this last week when we um, were with another alumni ambassador talking about Prague. You know, if you make that, that effort and show that, like, <laughs> I'm trying to learn. I'm not great at it. Um, you know, they're pretty, pretty receptive. So yeah. kind of out of order with these questions, but we'll just guide it as it comes. Um, what are the locals like? Are they initially friendly? Are they very um, uh, shy? Are they, you know, welcoming? What would you say your experience yeah, the um, were? I think that the locals were very welcoming to us. Mm -hmm. It is kind of scary being an American going there. You don't know how they're going to really think about you. Sure. Um, but they seemed very open and wanting to meet us and wanting to learn more about our lives. And something that I thought was really cool that I learned from my friends that still live in Europe is kind of how connected we really are. You think that they live in a different country, their life is completely different, but we all still have so many similar interests and so much in common. So it's kind of a really cool experience to get closer to people from a different culture and learn more about them as you also learn about yourself and your own culture. Sure. Would you say that people in Barcelona, the locals, do they, is it an even split between consumption of like American culture and American TV versus, you know, that of Spain? Or would you say they're more traditional in like, Spain consumption of culture? 
Um, I think that in Barcelona, I guess it is kind of 50-50. They are very um, focused on the pres like preserving the Catalan culture. So that is really cool. They have a lot of like big cultural activities that they do a lot and they hold like their holidays very special to them. So I think it's kind of a mix, but also I know that like my friends from other countries, they do get a lot of like the American culture from social media. So that's oh, kind sure. of a big thing that they're <laughs> getting now. Absolutely. They all think we're from Hollywood and um, that's not so much the case. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, the, that's the consensus. Um, mm -hmm. So you said something about holidays. Last time I was in Barcelona, um, I believe it was like Easter Sunday and they had the most extravagant parade I've ever seen in my entire mm -hmm. life. And I think it lasted like for five or six hours. I mean, it was just immaculate. Did you get to experience any any holidays during your, your semester? Um, we had, there was Carnival, which is a big thing okay. in Spain that was happening while I was still there. Um, I know that in May, I believe there was mm -hmm. supposed to be, or I think it was April, there was a um, St. Jordi Day is a big thing in Barcelona where everybody buys the like their lover like books and flowers. So that was something that I was excited to see, which I obviously didn't get to, but hopefully in the future I will. It seems like a really beautiful activity. And my professor said the whole city is just lively and everybody has flowers and books and it just seems really nice. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? That's kind of like their version of Valentine's Day, but instead of yeah. like chocolate, you're getting books. I think that is so cool. Yeah, That's my really Valentine's cool. Day. So we, we kind of skipped this. I'm, I did this last time too. So you studied in spring 2020. Mm -hmm. And for everyone watching spring 2020, that was the semester <laughs> in which uh, the COVID monster forced us to repatriate all of our students, all of yeah. our participants home early. So you would have initially had, how long would your, your program initially have been? And when did you repatriate in, in comparison to that deadline? Yeah, so my program would have gone until um, the end of April, I think it was like April 23rd, I was planning mm -hmm. to stay an extra month and a half basically in Europe just to travel and yeah. um, experience more things. But we had to leave on March 14th, I think is when I got back to the United States. So that was obviously a big chunk of time that we missed out on. Yeah. COVID. But as I say to all of our students and, and everybody and, and Haley, you're a part of this, like just good for you guys for, for just kind of going with the flow, doing yeah. what was necessary, being so cooperative, like gold star to everybody. And then <laughs> all of you are so ready to go back. It's just, yeah. it, it warms my heart to know that, you know, the pandemic has not scared us away yeah, from uh, from the future, which is really great. Mm -hmm. um, if you did study abroad again, would you go back to Barcelona? Would you choose a different program? What, what do you um, think? Would, hypothetically I, speaking. Yeah, I really loved Barcelona. It was such a fun city. I met so many amazing people and I was with the best people in my study abroad group too. I think that there's a lot more that I would want to do in the city. Mm -hmm. Like there's never enough that you can see. There's so many different areas and neighborhoods and people to meet and places to go. So I think I'm definitely open to, I want to explore more places for sure that are on my bucket list, but yeah. Barcelona is definitely very close to my heart now. Awesome. Very cool. So it goes without saying your favorite city is probably of the ones you have traveled to so far. Yeah. Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah. It's a little bit of a bias. You can't help. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's now your second home. Um, mm -hmm. So you've talked a lot about different friendships, what have you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about both the local friends that you made and then friends you made through... AIFS or other yeah. providers that maybe you met in Barcelona um, and again how have those relationships changed since you've returned back? Yeah um, I when I was studying abroad I went I only knew one girl who was going with me and she was going to be my roommate so I didn't have like that many people that I knew that were going abroad but that's mm -hmm. kind of how I wanted it to be I wanted to meet a lot of new people and really try to push myself out of that comfort zone and to meet a lot of new friends so I'm really lucky that I met so many amazing people when I got there um, I did the pre-excursion to London with AFS so that was mm -hmm. kind of a nice way to meet people before getting to Barcelona um, so I'm really glad that I did that even though we were exhausted the whole time in London <laughs> from the um, time change, but it was still yeah. really fun. And then when we got to Barcelona, it was actually my 21st birthday. So oh. that was kind of a fun activity that Very people wanted cool. to like hang out. And um, at my apartment, I lived like a three minute walk from some of my really, really good friends now. So it was really nice that I could just walk over to their house literally whenever and basically live with them. 
Um, but yeah, there was, I met so many people that I'm so close to now. And we did meet a lot of locals just randomly throughout the city. And it, that was like something very special to me because I'm glad that I was able to meet lo more local people and hear about their perspectives. Um, some of them are from places like Switzerland, which is really like very different than uh, my host country, obviously. And I just really value those experiences that I got in those friendships. And I still talk to all of the people. I still talk to the people that live in um, Europe pretty much every day now. And I talk to my study abroad friends like every second of every day. I don't even know how I ever lived without them. So I'm very <laughs> glad that I. I know met it's them. like um, before study abroad and life after study <laughs> abroad, and it all it does come down to to the people um, that you meet. And as I tell every student that returns, um, like stay in touch with those people, especially mm -hmm. the friends that you've made abroad, because you will have places to visit in the future. Yeah. Um, the best kind of experience you can have, whether that's study abroad or, or travel outside of study abroad, is to see things through a local scope, through the eyes mm -hmm. of a local. They will yeah. show you hidden gems you never knew existed. Like it is great to go to Parc de Guap, well, I'm not saying that correctly. Uh, <laughs> Garda, um, yeah, you know, all of those yeah. places, but they will show you places that you probably would not have been, been able to find otherwise um, yeah. that are, you know, privy to the locals. So yeah, definitely stay in touch with those friends. Thank goodness for social media. Um, yeah. Awesome. So speaking of travel, did you go on any weekend trips, any AIFS excursions, um, any travels outside of, of the excursions that we planned for you guys? Um, yeah. Can you just take us somewhere besides <laughs> our bedrooms, please. Yeah, with AFS, I went on the trip to Sevilla and Granada, which was a really mm -hmm. cool experience to just see different parts of Spain. It was so different than Barcelona. It was just nice to experience something different. Um, I really loved Granada. It was such a beautiful town. And I also went on the excursion to Morocco, which was such a cool experience. That was probably one of my favorite cultural experiences I had. I didn't really have any expectations when I went to Morocco. I wasn't really sure what to expect. I had never really heard much about it before, except mm -hmm. from other friends who had traveled there during study abroad. But that was just amazing. It was so beautiful and so interesting to see such a different culture and see how they live. Um, so I loved that. I also went... Um, aside from AIFS, I went to Zurich, Switzerland, with some of my friends one of the first weeks that we got there, which was so nice and cool to just, like, get out of the city. Um, we also went to Berlin, which was one of the top places on my list. I had always wanted to go there. I just loved the, like, funky feel of the city and the music and everything. I just thought it would be really cool. I also had, when I was in high school, I had a German exchange student. Um, and he was from a town near Hamburg. So it was kind of cool to talk to him and for him to tell me where to yeah. go in Berlin and just to relate to him in that way. Um, I also went to Mallorca, which is an island in Spain. Yep. And that was really beautiful. It was just cool to see different parts of Spain and kind of see how different they are than um, Barcelona. Mallorca was great because I'm from originally from California. So mm -hmm being near the beach and kind of those cliffs just reminded me of home in a way. So that was really nice. Um, where else did I go? I can't remember. You fit in a lot. Wait, how long were you there before you guys repatriated again? Can you remind us? Um, I got there January, I got to Barcelona on January 8th and we left March 14th. So you were like there under, you know, two, three, two months. Yeah, like two months. Three months, two and a half. Um, yeah. And you fit, I think I counted like seven different excursions that you Yeah, I'm trying to said. remember other places. I like literally was just somewhere else every, every weekend. That is awesome. Did you have, did you have a favorite, um, I guess, memory from any of those excursions or a place that you, you absolutely would go back hands down um, in a heartbeat? I definitely think I would go back to Berlin. I just mm -hmm. thought that was a really cool city. There's a really cool vibe to it. I love the yeah. art and all the history behind it. Sure. So I definitely think I would love to go back there and maybe spend more time living there. I know that my one of my aunts actually lived um, near Berlin in her life and she said it was just an amazing experience. So I would definitely like to do that. It was just fun exploring awesome. with all of my friends and just seeing all the different interesting things in the city. Awesome. Well, Haley, we do have uh, quite a few programs, both summer, fall, <laughs> spring in Berlin. So you'll get that study again, Grant. So yeah. uh, definitely consider. Awesome. <laughs> um, so 
again, I, I told our alumni ambassador, Gabby, this, and we talked about Prague. You get this question when you get home and it's like kind of vague and vast and how do you answer it in, in, in a short dialogue here? But, you know, what were the things that you, you valued about Barcelona, the top three favorite things that maybe, I would say best way to put it is that you miss now that you are back in the U.S.? Yeah, something I really love about the culture in Spain is that they really value just downtime. They're not really in a rush to get somewhere or to get things done. They mm -hmm. kind of just appreciate what's around them and what they're doing. They'll like sit and have lunch for a few hours, which I just loved. It's so much fun to just sit there and really talk to somebody and not just yeah. be constantly thinking about what else you have to do. Um, that was one of my favorite things. Um, I also just loved spending time um, in the park with my friends. We would always just sit there and lay and just kind of like embrace where we were. I just feel like sometimes in the U.S. it's hard to really just sit back and kind of look at your surroundings and be thankful for what you're doing. But mm -hmm. I feel like in Barcelona, I really made that a big thing to just always be trying to appreciate how grateful I've been for this experience and all the things around me. So that's definitely something that I miss a lot about living in Barcelona. And obviously, like the architecture, just walking around the streets, meeting a bunch of cool people. I could just walk anywhere and it would just be an experience in that. Yeah, it's just a like a visual movie reel around you. And maybe that's because it's it's it is different than the US. It's not something that we're we're used to. I'm surprised you didn't say food. Oh yeah, I also love food. <laughs> I'm like waiting for you to tell us about some of the tapas and, oh, and yeah, things we experienced. Miss going to get tapas with my friends. We would do that and just spend like three hours sitting there. And it was just yeah. great to try all these different dishes. I also feel like I kind of expanded my horizons a lot more with food and was just more open to trying things because I could. Yeah. And you're right on, Barcelona's right on the coast of Spain. Mm -hmm. So like seafood galore, but seafood yeah. like you've never had it in your lifetime. It's it's amazing. As fresh yeah. as it comes because you're you're literally right there. Um so okay, we'll take a step away from food for a second. We'll come <laughs> back to it. Um let's talk a little bit about your classes, right? The purpose of the the entire program is to go and earn college credits. Um so did you have a favorite class? Did you have a class that was challenging? Um what was the classroom setting like? Can you just paint that picture for us? Yeah. So um my apartment was basically a three minute walk from San Pao, which is the campus that all my classes were at, at UAB. Mm -hmm. So that was really nice that I could just walk right over there. Um, it was such a beautiful campus. I definitely miss going to that campus a lot, but one of my favorite classes was intercultural communication. Um, since I'm a journalism major, the, those communication classes were kind of important for me to get while I was abroad. So I'm definitely glad that I was able to take one, but my intercultural communication class was just really interesting because before I had went abroad, I didn't really think about how important it is to be able to communicate with other cultures. And I had never really learned much about that. So that class really opened my eyes a lot to how important it is for honestly everybody to get that skill and in being interculturally competent because people in other cultures communicate so differently than we do. And if you aren't aware of that, you can really misunderstand what they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, so I really loved that class. I also took a Spanish class, which was just really fun. We would just kind of talk about things. We talk about holidays and how different it was in America to there. And it was just cool to meet your professors and get to know more about them. I also mm -hmm. took a architecture class, which was probably my most difficult because I had never done anything about architecture before. And it was very historical and I didn't know much about city planning but that was just really interesting to see how much the city has changed over time and how big events like the Olympics being in Barcelona has changed everything so that one was really interesting as well yeah and the Olympics bumping up that that rate of tourism and yeah. and the economy relying on that there are so many so many different things when like a, a show like that comes to town and with architecture yeah. it's kind of like you know the detail like I said if you went to Parc de Guel like the detail that they put into these mm -hmm. buildings and these just like these tile mosaics I mean it would yeah. make your head spin but it's it's like it's it's innate for for some of these these architects I mean it's mm -hmm. really really cool stuff did you get to go to Parc de Guel I, I know I keep yeah saying. I went to mm -hmm. Parc de Guel twice mm -hmm. um once I went with AIFS we had a little excursion that was really nice because it was included in our cost and they we just met them at the metro stop and then they took us up there so that was really nice um, and it was so beautiful. I just had to go again. My One of my friends um, 
from school, she came to visit me right before we got sent home. She literally was there when the band started. So that was interesting, but she came, so I had to show her everything. So we went to park well, and it was just great to see that. Yeah, and it's, it's cool. It's like bringing somebody to Disney World for the first time. You see their eyes light up, and you mm -hmm. get to be the tour guide. You're now like, yeah. um, you're the local in a sense. You're the one who gets to show them all the ins and outs in your favorite places. That's probably yeah. my favorite part of travel is when you get to mm -hmm. see somebody experience that for the first time. Um, yeah. And you get to kind of live vicariously through that initial reaction. Very mm -hmm. cool. Um, so you said something about the Metro got my wheels spinning. Um, was transportation pretty easy to navigate? Did you struggle with that in the beginning? How was that trajectory? Um, yeah, I felt that I loved the metro system. Honestly, I wish that we had that everywhere in the US. It's so helpful and so easy. You get places so fast, it can literally get you to the mountains or to the ocean so quickly. Um, I didn't think it was too hard for me to navigate. I had kind of had experience navigating a metro system in New York mm -hmm. and in San Francisco. So I kind of had an idea of how it worked. It was obviously a bit hard at first to just understand where the places are, but mm -hmm. once I kind of got the hang of it and kind of started to understand what which lines took me where, which stops were what, then it was super easy. We would always try to take the metro basically anywhere we went because mm -hmm. it was the cheapest option for us and it was just so easy. Yeah, it's part of the culture too. Like you just yeah. get the people watch down there and like, again, yeah. that, that slow pace of life, a little different underground when everyone's rushing into the Metro and trying to yeah. cram in. Um, that's the only time in Barcelona where I feel like life is fast paced is it's underground for sure. Yeah, awesome. and I really had to experience the big um, rush hour of the Metro because mm -hmm. I didn't have to take the Metro to go to class, but my friends that did have to take the Metro at like, uh, 9 a.m. It was always so packed. I would see their videos because yep. everybody's trying to get to work. So it was really busy. Your your cheek is like smushed up against yeah. the, the glass. Kind yeah, of. it's weird to think about yep. that now due to COVID. Yeah. But it's like, it's it's the staple. It's a staple of, of traveling in Europe or Spain mm -hmm. or wherever um, is just experience the transportation because whether you love it or hate it, you're going to have some kind of gratitude, whether it's for uh, the transportation abroad or you come home and you're like oh I love my car <laughs> you know yeah, like it was so I love driving. my commute to work <laughs> yeah, your so mind will change didn't know how to drive when I got back to the U.S. I was just like so confused because I hadn't been in a car in so long yeah and I think they're on the opposite side of are they on the opposite side oh, of the road not in Barcelona in they're London not? yes okay yeah so you come home and you have to think about it for a second like okay am I on the right side or the left yeah very important very mm -hmm. cool very. um we've talked about this before um packing right you're in a city where there's like a very eclectic range of like fashion what do you pack do you mm -hmm. pack nothing and then just shop while you're there barcelona has some of the best shopping i think i've ever encountered okay. um that's just a, a personal thing here but um can you tell us a little bit about some of the things you would recommend to bring for students that are going to barcelona um, things that you brought that maybe you didn't need, um, things you found that maybe you didn't think you'd find. Um, just kind of give us your packing list. Yeah, I was really stressed out trying to pack for Barcelona because I didn't want to bring too much because I knew that I wanted to shop a lot and it was mm -hmm. kind of hard picking and choosing exactly what items to bring. Um, I only brought, I brought like a small carry-on suitcase and then I brought like a normal um, checking size suitcase. And then I had another like duffel bag, but I brought it empty so that mm -hmm. I could like have a lot of space when I was leaving. Um, I didn't really, I honestly didn't bring a lot of stuff because I just knew that I was going to buy it there. And yeah. there was no point of me bringing that much stuff. But a hard thing for me to bring was definitely shoes because I love shoes and they're so big. You can't bring that many. Yeah. So I think that it's important when you go abroad, to, you don't have to bring that many shoes because you really don't need them. You need like what's comfortable and what you know you're going to wear a lot. If you bring something that you're not really sure you're going to wear, you probably won't. Um, so I think it's good to just be like realistic about what you're bringing and know that you obviously can buy things if you need something. I did, definitely did a lot of shopping right before we had to leave Spain. Um, I think it's good to bring like a, a good coat because it, it does get cold. You know, you think you're by the beach, but it definitely gets cold. And we had a really big storm um, in Barcelona. It was almost like a hurricane. It was something I'd never experienced before. But so it's definitely good to bring those like basic staples, things you can layer, things you can really wear with anything. I think mm -hmm. it's really important. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say, you know, 
think of Europe, guys. Think of like those cobblestone streets, yeah. like where the little restaurants are. Like comfy over over, you know, stylish. I think is kind yeah. of the way to go. I mean, you want to be both. I guess that's it's a hard barrier, mm -hmm. but um, you will find shoes abroad. Don't worry about that. Just oh, yeah. make sure you pack really comfortable walking shoes because it's a walkable city and. You don't want to spend all your time on the metro. You kind of want to experience what you're walking around and experience the mm -hmm. architecture. So, yeah, comfy over a fashionable any day. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I probably should have asked you this question earlier, but the way I like to describe it, the way I always describe it is, you know, when you get to a place for the first time, you have that culture shock and it's that, you know, moment of, okay, Dorothy, Toto, whoever, uh, I'm not in Kansas anymore. Like, it just something hits you, something you haven't seen before where you're like, all right, yeah, I've left the U.S. totally. Mm -hmm. um, did you have that experience first in in London? Did you have a moment of culture shock when you had done the overnight um, flights through AIFS? And then what was your, your culture shock moment in, in Barcelona? Mm -hmm. um, when I got to London, I had never been to London before, so that's mm -hmm. kind of why I wanted to go. I didn't really think I had culture shock. Maybe I was just so tired that I had no idea what was going on. But that lag, it yeah. seemed very much like the U.S. because they do speak English. I don't know. It just seemed it seemed like I was still in the United States for me personally. And I know that a lot of my friends abroad kind of said the same things. They had the mm -hmm. same ideas about London. Um, when I got to Barcelona, I had already been to Barcelona once before. So mm -hmm. I kind of knew what to expect a little bit. Um, I don't think I had really that bad of culture shock. Mm -hmm. When I got there, I was just very excited to be there finally because I had been thinking about it for the past year. Yeah. So I think that I was really just excited and kind of embracing all the different things about being in Europe. Um, so I wouldn't really say that I had that bad of culture shock. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that was like hard for me was my like phone situation because I didn't have like a SIM card. You couldn't use your phone because it's expensive. So that was kind of like the hardest thing was just trying to figure out that. And it was just kind of a pain. Yeah. In that way. Would you say there's any any pros to that, to not be on your phone all the time, to kind of unplug? Or are you the type of person you're like, no, no, I need that with me at all times? Yeah, um, I obviously like took pictures on my phone, but it, it definitely was nice to not just be on it, to just be kind of living life and staying with people, making sure I didn't get lost, obviously. But yeah, in Barcelona, I really never went on my phone, not much as I do here, because I was either always with people, always out at dinner, not going on my phone. So it was definitely nice to just like unplug for that time there and yeah. really experience things while they're yeah. happening. The gram is great. Facebook is great. I don't have a Twitter, but I hear it's great. Um, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, you want to be like present in those mm -hmm. moments as much as you can. Definitely. I mean, you yeah. definitely, yeah, share your stories, share your pictures, but remember that pictures are only half the story and the definitely. parts you're going to treasure are locked up in there. Yes. Um, would you say that being a Barcelona, you know, we, I think in the US, we are constantly on our devices. We're on it right now. Um, but would you say in Barcelona, are they super connected to, to their phones? Do you see a lot of people like walking and texting and, and, and doing that sort of thing? Or would you um, say it's very different? Definitely not anything like the US. I also think people are more conscious about going on their phones because there is like a big problem with pickpocketing and that type of thing. So people don't just throw their phone on the table while they're having dinner because it could get stolen. People are more cautious about that. And yeah, I think that people, it goes into say how the culture in Spain, they just live in the moment. I think that they're, they're more appreciating the time that's around them rather than trying to figure out when they have a meeting on their phone or what who's doing this they're kind of just living their life in the moment and appreciating that which is something that I really value and I try to put into my life more here yeah. now that I'm back in the United States try to adopt some of those those mm -hmm. things that you've you've witnessed when you're abroad um and try to you know not just adopt them for like the first couple of weeks but like throughout the rest of your your life and let that echo in a positive way and it's hard right now because I, I don't know if you're in a dorm or your home but um we've just we've been inside for how many months you know I mean yeah. yes we've we've obviously evolved a little bit uh, through this pandemic but for the most part um we're not we're not going too far so uh yeah. definitely a different kind of construct right now awesome so we talked about culture shock what about reverse culture shock and I'm sure you had somewhat of a different experience than most of our participants because again you repatriated prematurely come home to a pandemic so what was that reverse culture shock like or was it just 
did you not have any? Because we have people who have not had reverse culture shock and they're happy to be home. So what was yeah. your, your position I, on that? Yeah, the, I think I definitely think the reverse culture shock hit me a lot more. I definitely had culture shock when I got back to the US. It was just so different from being there and having to leave so soon, obviously being so kind of upset about having to leave early. So it was um, definitely hard. I flew into LA because my um, I live close to there. So it was very weird being in a very big city all of a sudden. And especially with COVID, there was just so much uncertainty in the world. So I really didn't know what was going to happen to me when I landed in the United States. That was kind of weird. Um, but yeah, when I got back to my house, it was just so different kind of just being there all of a sudden. It was like I was on a plane in Europe one day and then all of a sudden now I'm back in my bed in my childhood room. So that was just kind of weird. But um, something that helped me a lot kind of get through that reverse culture shock was I kept in contact with my um, friends from Europe a lot during that time and just kind of to talk about how things were in the US and how things were going for them. And I know that they thought it was so weird how everybody was buying all of the food from the grocery stores. And I remember sending my friend a picture of empty shelves at the store and he was just so shocked that that was happening in the US. Um, I also kept in contact a lot with my friends that were also in quarantine because we had all just gotten back from Europe. So it was kind of nice to know that they were feeling the same things as me. And in my classes, my um, intercultural communication class specifically, that one, she kind of helped us a lot kind of unpack our experience, which I thought was really helpful because you get back and you studied abroad and you just don't really know how to process it. So it was really helpful to read about how other people have gone about processing their experiences and just kind of how to go about it because it is a hard process. And if you don't really know what to do, you're just kind of sitting there wondering how to make it all worthwhile. Yeah. Do you just sit in your room and, and meditate all day, yeah. right? Like what, what options do you have? That's awesome. And you were continuing classes um, virtually through the yeah. end of the semester. So did you, did you find that a lot of the courses that you did take, were they pretty transferable to that online setting with your, your faculty? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. A, lo a lot of the classes that I took in Spain were very mm -hmm. based off of um, participation. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of hard to switch on to online because we would go from basically our class being having a conversation about what did you experience today? What is something that you experienced this weekend that made you think this? Um, so it was kind of hard. We didn't really have, we weren't really able to have those conversations anymore because we weren't doing anything. Right. So it kind of turned into more like just assignments, readings, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it was very different. Um, we didn't have too much left to school. I think mm -hmm. only like few weeks or something so it wasn't yeah. horrible but it was definitely a different experience than how it was in the classroom in Barcelona sure. and you're really at this point for those courses and for those like participation moments you're relying on those memories mm -hmm. that you've made in that you know in that program so that you can kind of oh yeah I remember when I was in Barcelona and I experienced yeah. x y and z very cool so you talked about you know, obviously you're, you're continuing classes virtually, you're staying in touch with your friends that you've made both that are, you know, from Spain, from other parts of the world, from, you know, the U.S. that have also repatriated. Um, did you have uh, any kind of relationship with your resident director and your resident director staff, um, either during the program, thereafter, you know, for, for additional support? Yeah, the on-site staff was amazing in Barcelona. Um, just typically, Emma was great. She was always so helpful, so friendly when we came into the awesome. office. They were always just um, ready to help us with anything. If if you needed somebody to translate for you to figure out your phone or your card or something, they were always there to help, which I think is really helpful. And I think a lot of people might not really realize that you have that kind of support in Barcelona. It's not like they just throw you in and kind of expect you to do whatever. They really are there to help you if you need help. Yeah. Um, so once we got back, she... Emma was really helpful because when we got sent home, um, she like arranged for us to get transportation from our apartments to the airport, which was so much stress off of me. I'm glad that I didn't have to plan that. Yeah. Um, and she was there um, with us the whole time, kind of waiting to make sure that we got our bags checked and that we were on the way to the gate. So that was kind of helpful just to know that there was somebody that was like looking out for you, especially when we were all uh, in Europe and our parents were probably worried about us too. So that was really nice. Um, and then when we got back, she did set up like um, kind of like Zoom meetings to unpack your experience, things like that. She was always emailing us, like asking us how we were, knowing that they were there for us, kind of um, telling us about 
her experience there and actually a few weeks ago I did get an email from her talking about how she was excited to see some of us from Barcelona on the ambassador list so that was kind of nice to see that and hear from her just because she was a really cool person to meet. Yeah awesome and that's I we've talked about this before but you guys have not just your pre-departure support your support when you're on the the program um on site but then mm -hmm. you also have all these really cool opportunities for thereafter um you mm -hmm. have your, your field staff teams that you stay in touch with your alumni network that you have um you have cool opportunities like becoming an alumni ambassador all those really cool things mm -hmm. um question again wish i did these in a different order but <laughs> hindsight and this year 2020 um your housing right we're talking about resident director support what have you um we do offer a few different housings for our programs in in barcelona so which one did you end up going with and can you tell us a little bit about you know what that housing was like yeah i did the apartment option in barcelona mm -hmm. so i was in an apartment building it was probably like a five minute walk from sagrada familia um there were also a lot it, my apartment had three other girls living in it so there were four of us we each had double rooms, so we shared with another girl. Um, so that was really fun to meet new people. Also, my apartment building was cool because there was, I think, three other groups of AIFS girls that were living in it. So that was really fun to um, just to meet new people. And we always kind of had people around to see in the elevator when we were coming home. Um, so I really liked that option. I thought it was nice to kind of have your own space in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. It kind of felt more like home. You were able to cook for yourself. Um, so that was a, a fun experience to have an apartment in Barcelona. For sure. Those communal living settings are, are kind of like really beneficial because you do meet mm -hmm. people that maybe you didn't have yeah. with or um, mm -hmm. someone can teach you how to cook something. Did you, do you feel like you cooked more or ate out at restaurants more? Um, I feel like I would, I would fail at the cooking. I would always yeah, want to eat the, <laughs> But the first month that I got there, I was only eating out because it was just easier. And there were so many restaurants that my friends and I wanted to try. Mm -hmm. Then I started to realize I was spending a lot of money. So I had to stop doing that. Yeah. Um, I would cook occasionally, nothing very extravagant, but just kind of to get by, just small things. And I will bet that Inma and the uh, resident staff probably gave you a, a short list of places that you should try to eat at. I'm sure oh, yeah. they have the best so recommendations. Oh, absolutely. Um, so we talked about all the opportunities after the, after the program, being an alumni ambassador, what have you. So your role as an alumni ambassador is to pretty much like I always say, you know, encourage students to study abroad, share your experiences, mm -hmm. um, you know, make them feel that they have that that support staff and that support team, which you get to be a part of, um, an integral part of to help get them abroad. So what is what is the phrase or what is the advice that you would give somebody if they were on the fence or, you know, n unsure if this is something that they wanted to pursue? Yeah, um, I would just say to stay open minded about the whole experience. I know that it can be a bit scary to leave what you're comfortable with, and especially to go to a different country where you might not speak the language or you might not know people, but um, it's so easy to m make friends and to get those experiences. And I think it's really important to push yourself to try to get that, even though, if it makes you uncomfortable. Um, I think that you'll end up loving it and you'll meet a lot of really cool people. And I think it's just a really great experience for everybody to have to live in a different country and kind of see how different it is there. And you might end up loving it and wanting to move back. You never really know. Yeah, I agree with that. Someone had once said, um, we were in a meeting recently and um, said something like your emotional intelligence rate just shoots through the roof after you've studied abroad and your mm -hmm. your ability to be empathetic too because you're just experiencing people and, and places that are just completely this sense of newness. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm with you on that. You definitely have, have a completely different outlook on everything thereafter. Um, so with that being said, you know, we're talking personally, professionally, as an ambassador, as just Haley yourself, um, in what ways do you feel like you grew and how are you gonna take that growth and apply that to your, your personal life, your professional life, your academics? Yeah, I feel like I just learned a lot about, more about communication and the importance of that and that's really helpful. I think it's gonna help me a lot in my career and whatever I do with communications or journalism or whatnot, but I think that kind of learning more about being interculturally competent and 
how to communicate with other cultures will help me a lot in my future. Um, I think that I just got more confident with myself and with my skills and things that are going to help me in the future. So I think that studying abroad just really opened my eyes to a lot of new things around me. And now I feel like there's so many different ways that I could take my life. And it's just kind of exciting to be able to see that. Yeah, maybe you will live abroad. Maybe you'll work <laughs> for study abroad. You never know where this opportunity is going to take yeah. you. And definitely, I will speak from experience. It echoes throughout everything you do from here on uh, here on end, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. So awesome. Um, so guys, I saw a bunch of questions come in. We're going to try to, I'm going to scroll back and see where we begin <laughs> with this. Haley has been so good at answering all of our questions. We're going to throw a few more at her. I'm sorry, Haley, give me a second. Um, okay. A Herm 19 did, oh, this is not a question. This is a comment. Did an AIFS trip to three years ago to Barcelona. Hands up. Very cool. A Herm. Good to see you. Uh, okay. Do Clem and Rita still run the Barcelona program? Also a Herm. I, I think it's just Inma, Inma yeah. now on site um, and I don't think they do anymore. I don't know if Clem and Rita are still with us, but um, again, we love Inma. We love Inma so much. Um, and I'm sure that all the resident directors before her have also been just as loved and adored. Um, mm -hmm. I will say guys, Barcelona is one of our top rated programs. It's one of our programs that fills up um, the fastest in terms of fall and spring semester. So Haley, if you could answer that question, why do you think it's top rated? Like, if you could sum that up for us, you know. Um, I think that it's just a really great city to study abroad in. There's so much um, more to the city than you really would see if you were just going there. As a tourist, when I went with my family for like five days a few years ago, I loved it, obviously, because it's beautiful, but I don't think that I got nearly close to the experience that I have gotten now. So I think that a lot of people just see a lot of it's a very fun city. It's very lively. It's very good to go when you're young. So I think it kind of draws people in. They want to get that culture. They really want to get that experience. So I think that Barcelona is the perfect place to start. Yes. The, the nightlife is fun. Um, but also, you know, I don't know if we talked about this, but siesta, is that still a, a oh, tradition? Um, yeah, kind of. I didn't, really, I didn't really take up on that um, at all, but there are obviously hours where shops are closed but it wasn't yeah. I kind of thought it would be like everything was closed but mm -hmm. I, I, I would assume it would be more like that in a smaller town but sure. in Barcelona there obviously are still things open in that chunk yeah. of time where people are sleeping and it just reflects back on that whole you know pace of like we're slowing down we have time to do other things in our day but this is important to us too is to yeah. just kind of relax um someone said I did a program in Paris 2014 changed my life um we will be doing an Instagram live on Paris uh in December, I believe. Um, guys, just keep keep uh, in touch and, and following the IG handle because we will announce those a couple of days in advance. Um, the Only Bud says, I'm still good friends with all my study abroad friends and all the friends I made in Paris. Awesome. Cape Town, way to go, Haley. Yes, way to go, oh, Haley. Thanks for my program. Uh, someone says, yeah, same. I talked to my friends from Barca as well. And I've been traveling there ever since. Awesome. Uh, we have a uh, question from Kat Rogliano. What is your favorite memory from studying abroad? This is always tough because how do you choose just one? So hard. Um, yes. I, hard to pick just one. I would just say like meeting all the people that I did really was just probably my favorite thing. Um, I just, we just had so much fun. Every experience that we had together, whether it was just going and having coffee on a random day or going to the beach and watching the sunset, pretty much everything that we did, we made it special, which I think is something that I hold really true to my heart now, since we obviously didn't have as much time as we were supposed to. Um, it's just very nice. I'm glad that we kind of made the most of every moment. We didn't really let the like fear of COVID as it was approaching us affect our experiences. The looming yeah. pandemic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the essence of time is something that I think it's, it's definitely changed our, our perspective. Um, Robert, Belcher, AIFS, Granada for life. Well, Spain, man. It's, we have a couple programs in Spain, guys, and we will be covering a couple of them uh, throughout this alumni series. Um, awesome. More praise for Granada. Oh, we have another one. AIFS Salamanca 1997. Mm -hmm. Guys, wow. AIFS has been around for uh, 50 plus years, just in case anybody was wondering uh, the longevity 
um, that is where we're at today, and we're still still trucking. Uh, Kat Rogliano, did you interact with your resident director or the AIFS staff in Barcelona? We talked a little bit about this, but if you want to expand on that more, feel free, Haley. Yeah, we would go to the office, um, just kind of when we needed anything, if we had mail, which occasionally we would get mail sent to us, which was always a fun thing. We would just go in and kind of talk with them. They were so friendly and so helpful to us. They really made us feel comfortable in the city. So that was kind of a really nice thing about having them. If we ever had questions, we could always ask them and they were always really quick to respond to us if it was email or something like that. Yeah, I will say, you know, they're they're there to be your liaison, not necessarily to, to hold your hand, but if you ever need anything, they are just the, the best resource throughout, you know, the entire program. And I, I think I said this last week, um, you know, our resident director staff, they love what they do and they, they miss you guys so much. So the sooner yeah. um, we can flatten this curve, the sooner we can get out there and get everybody reunited, which is awesome. Um, Lindsay Kearney, Barcelona gets cold. I didn't bring enough warm clothes in December and Those was freezing. Yeah, guys, don't assume <laughs> just because it's, you know, on the coast, where did we go? I can't, I didn't see it anymore. Um, that it's on the coast, that it's going to be, you know, sunny and 75 every day. You definitely get uh, all sorts of climate weather. So you want to <laughs> prepare for options, but also know you can shop in Barcelona. Yeah. Um, when we got there, they told us that it never really rains, but we actually got like kind of like a whole week of rain, which was so interesting. They were like, you guys are so lucky it never rains here. And we were like, we don't want the rain. Yeah, I know. There's, yeah, you can experience all different kinds of, of weather. And it's also kind of cool to see how, like, the locals, how do they navigate all the different weather? You know, when we get a hurricane yeah. warning in Florida or Texas or on the East Coast, um, you know, we, we kind of duck and cover, right? We're prepared multiple days in advance. But with people in Barcelona, you know, how, how did they react to that semi-hurricane that you were talking about? Yeah, well, something we all noticed was that the people in Barcelona really think it's like freezing when it's not that cold. They'll be like bundled up with like a big puffy jacket and a scarf. <laughs> and we're like, it's not even that cold. You're it's in like, a tank top. You're yeah, completely they, they on the opposite it's spectrum. Like freezing because they're so used to like the warm weather that they get pretty much all the time. But when that rain actually comes, they're like, what is this? And I, I kind of related to that because since I'm from California, we obviously don't get a lot of rain. So yeah. rain is kind of like a foreign thing to me. So it's kind of interesting. A foreign thing in a foreign place. There you go. Yeah. Um, we have one from I am Nicole Carpenter. It was, was it hard to communicate with the locals. We talked a little bit about this, but you can go ahead and expand on that. Yeah. Um, well, English is pretty prevalent in Spain. A lot of people, they really learn English in school. So they pretty much know how to speak English very well. So I didn't really run into any problems with people. Pretty much everybody that I met spoke English also. So that was an easy way to communicate. Obviously, they speak like five languages. So awesome. that was really cool and interesting. But you don't really necessarily have to know the language to get to know locals. They pretty much can communicate with you in English. And you can obviously try to communicate with them in their language as well if you want to. Yeah, definitely. And it's a little bit of that lisp, right? Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that part. Uh, Chandler Barrett, AIFS Barcelona is the best. We love Inma. Yes, we do. Praise <laughs> Inma. Um, studied in London 2012. It was amazing. Changed my life. We're getting a lot of these testaments. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Celeb Burnett, uh, Celeb Burner account. I would love to study abroad. Where do I start? Um, we, you can contact us, link in the bio, all of our information on the handle, and we can definitely help you get mm -hmm. started. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let me see. I think... Uh, Chandler Barrett, I met Haley through AFIS this semester, um, met up in Alabama, awesome. Your friend Chandler is, is sending some, some hellos. <laughs> yeah. um, you will meet your best of our friends through the programs, awesome. Um, someone asked religious programs. Um, we do have different programs that will have 
courses that uh, cover history, religion of history, or history of religion, rather, things of that nature. So there are definitely some courses you can take that are privy um, to that to answer your question. Um, all right. So, guys, before we go, we have about 10 minutes left. Um, we're going to do a quick little lightning round with Haley, and then I have some announcements we're going to follow up with. Um, so Haley, if you didn't see this last time, I'm just going to give you one word and I want you to say the first thing that comes to mind um, in regards to your experience in Barcelona. So uh, my favorite first and foremost, uh, food. Um, delicious. Perfect. You know, there's, there's really no explanation needed. Um, transportation. Quick. Best kind. Uh, locals. Unique. Awesome. Language. Beautiful. Nice. Favorite city. Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I got to take that one out. It's kind it. of coming to be a no brainer. Landmarks. Sagrada Familia. Yeah, it's so cool. It just looks like a like a melted candle. Um, I wish yeah, I could like beautiful. post pictures in here. I'm not sure if you can. Yeah. Um, architecture. Uh, Gaudi. Oh, good one. That's a name. I'll take it. Love it. You yeah. guys should definitely Google that. Um, and I don't prepare you with this one, but one word to describe your entire experience. Um, extraordinary. Oh, I love that. Perfect. And you're definitely probably going to go back someday to, to continue the journey. So yeah, awesome, Haley. Great, great stuff. Um, you definitely have given us some proof in the pudding as to why uh, Barcelona is one of our top rated uh, cities, top rated programs. So thank you so much for, mm -hmm. for filling us in. And again, I'm so sorry your your semester got cut <laughs> short, but you have okay. definitely still given us uh, some really great stuff to, to go with um, in terms of what you experienced. And again, just 2020 spring, you guys are so resilient. Um, we yeah. love hearing you know, these comeback stories, if you will. All mm -hmm. right, guys, couple announcements before we uh, sign off today. We are as of very recently, um, we are offering two lucky winners uh, for, uh, I keep saying summer, any uh, study abroad program for the year 2021, two winners um, you can enter to win free round trip airfare. So we are gonna be doing that promotion again. Um, deadline for that uh, promo is the 21st of October. Sorry, it's a lot of information to remember. <laughs> 21st of October, you just send us a quick video. It doesn't have to be anything high end or highly edited. We're not looking for the next, you know, Steven Spielberg or anything like that. Um, but just, you know, tell us a little bit about where you're studying abroad, why you're excited to go. Um, quick 30 second video, if you submit that by October 21st, um, we will enter you in. And again, we're going to pick two lucky winners. Free round trip airfare. Free airfare are like my two Amazing. favorite words put mm -hmm. together. I don't know about you, but I would definitely get okay. in on that. Um, we are going to be live again next Wednesday. Um, I believe that's the, what's the date? Next Wednesday, the 30th. Um, we're just going to be reviewing some things that are coming down the pike for spring, summer, and fall 2021. So definitely come in for that live. Again, these lives always live on the handle. So if you can't make it because you have class or you just want to take a siesta uh, <laughs> here in the U.S., whatever the reason, uh, you can always review it later. But we're going to be talking about uh, lots of different things coming down the pike for uh, spring, summer, fall 2021. Um, what else? We are going to be live again next Friday, I believe 1 p.m. Um, we'll be traveling to another destination with one of our AIFS alumni ambassadors. So like I said, guys, we'll be doing this all semester long. Um, so if you do have any questions that we've missed for Miss Haley or any of our other alumni ambassadors, you can definitely shoot us an email. Like I said, um, link is in the bio. You can send us a DM. Just make sure you send us with your uh, phone number and email so we can get back to you promptly. Um, but any questions at any given time, feel free to reach out to us. Again, deadline for the free round trip airfare is October 21st. Don't miss out on that. It's an awesome opportunity, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're one of the lucky two winners. So guys, I just wanna make sure we don't have any other questions for Miss Haley. 
We do not, but I have one from the hostel group. Study abroad if you have the chance. Transforms your life and a way of thinking many years after. Yes, I will toast to that as well. And I think Haley can, can definitely uh, agree with me. All right, guys. Well, that is all for today. Again, we'll be alive alive. We'll be live next Wednesday and next Friday. So we will see you soon. Haley, thank you again for sharing your experience. Yeah, I'm ready to go to Barcelona. I'm ready to go anywhere, but Barcelona yeah, sounds too. like a, a pretty good option. Um, and again, guys, if you have any questions that we didn't reach today, just feel free to, to send them our way. All right, guys, we're signing off. Stay safe, be well, and we will see you soon. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye, Haley. Bye.